What's going on everybody? Biker Dave with the new vehicle here. We got this 2008 Hummer H3 Alpha. And of course, the first thing we're going to do is a new exhaust system. So we've got the uh, Magnaflow part number 16832. Looks pretty straightforward. We've just mocked it up right now. You know, to make sure everything looks as it should before we get into the vehicle with it. Looks fairly straightforward. It comes with all the clamps needed. All the big clamps right there, full instructions. Uh, we're just going to cut out the old system with a regular old electric hacksaw. Just to make it easier and quicker. And make sure you use some kind of rubbery gloves or something, you know, something you can have good grip. With these pieces because some of this stuff can be sharp edged especially when you're cutting pieces off so make sure you wear gloves and eye protection now some items that'll be handy will be of course an air ratchet if you have one or an impact driver of some sort an impact drill because if you try to mess with this with your know, hand ratchets and the stuff you're gonna it's gonna take forever and some of these are gonna be awfully tight as well so i recommend an air ratchet or an impact driver We'll probably use both. But yeah, looks good. And should sound awesome, which is really the main concern, right? <laughs> All right, we're underneath here and everything looks pretty straightforward. You know, we're just gonna, we're gonna cut right behind this muffler right here. And then we'll just bring the rear half out the back. And then the front half will stay in here. It's easiest if you can cut it, you know, right around the mid, mid area here of the system. And it just has basic, uh, you know, rubber holders there that hold these hangers. So you might need a little bit of um, maybe some soapy liquid or something to remove those because they might be a little bit sticky. See that there. And uh, everything will attach. Like the uh, that rear half that you see way over there. That right there that looks like a, a trumpet baffle or whatever. That will go right here. The little Y part will branch off, go up across here, and we'll attach goes right there. Mail truck is here, sounds like. And then let's go take a look at the rear. And then of course we've got this section that goes over the rear axle here. So that should be pretty easy also. And under the back of the vehicle here, of course, the uh, the new setup has twin exhaust, which will come out right here and that other lip there. So that should look really nice. Get rid of this humongous muffler right here. We're just gonna hack it off right right behind there and uh, go for it. So, not a big deal. We're excited. Oh, and we're gonna do uh, before and after sound comparisons also. So be on the lookout for those videos. Um, it should be pretty good. So hang tight, and we'll be right back. Now, especially if you're working by yourself, or even if you've got a helper with you, I recommend that you put a jack under the rear muffler area because it is quite heavy. And it could come crashing down, you know, as soon as you get that hanger loose up there. So give it some sort of support or a little stand or anything that'll just keep it from flopping down. And it'll help, it'll help you uh, in removing the hangers as well if you just put a little support under the rear muffler. Uh, there's another little hanger right up there that we'll have to remove. And make sure you don't damage those big rubber hangers because... I mean, you you can replace them at most auto parts stores, but you'd rather not if you don't you know if you don't have to. 
Okay, now the easiest way to remove these hangers, you can spray you a little lubricant, you know, just up in here on both sides. It can be pretty much any kind of lube or any kind of soapy water or something like that. Then get you a good big set of channel locks, some serious ones, and you're going to use that end of the prong to push on basically. And it's going to take a little effort, you know, so you're going to put the bottom jaw on the end of the prong, then just start squeezing. And as you keep working it, it'll start to loosen up and pop off of this little lip here, which is the hardest part. But just, yeah, just use channel locks and a lot of force and a lot of manipulation and it'll come off of there. That's it as far as exhaust hangers. All right, when you're dealing with the rear muffler section here, it's easiest if you remove the hangers, you know, from this side first, and you'll just have to spray a little bit of lubricant of some sort, you know, around the post there and there. Then you can drop your jack down and let this end tip downward. Then this end will almost fall right out of the other hanger. So that's what I found would be the easiest. And of course, release that uh, forward hanger first. I mean, it's, it's a little difficult, but it's not impossible. Removing this stuff was not the simplest thing. And make sure you be careful too, because if you're cutting this stuff, uh, don't have your head anywhere underneath there because it'll fall and clunk you in the head. It almost got me twice. So, and you'll go through quite a few of your uh, hacksaw blades also, and you know, try to use some sort of uh, cutting lubricant or something like that while you're cutting through. If you got to cut through bolts, use some sort of uh, cutting lubricant. Like my favorite thing is called Tap Magic. This stuff right here, very handy stuff for cutting through things. And, uh, and here's the back. See how it tucks under right there in these little dips on the bumper? Man, that's so awesome. It's like it's from the factory that way. All right, guys. A few notes for you if you're installing this exhaust on your Hummer H3. Um, I had to actually cut the bolts off at the flange right here, you know, where it meets up with your existing exhaust i had to cut those out of there because there's no room to fight to fit a wrench because the bolts were facing the other way so i had absolutely no room back here to get any torque on it to uh, to loosen those very crusty bolts so i just cut them off with uh, my electric hacksaw and um and then i faced the other the new ones towards the back of the vehicle so it's a lot easier to you know to put it on there and torque it down nicely and all that and as far as putting on the the hangers you know just use some uh, you know some kind of soapy water or some kind of you know just slippery fluid that'll help you slide the hangers over those hooks much easier and um, and in removal I had to cut off both before and after the resonator it was just too difficult to try and fish it out of there so cut it off before and after to get the old one out of there. Then you start installing from the front of the vehicle and work your way back. Okay. And just make sure everything is just sort of loose at first as you fit everything together. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. And you, you want to make sure that nothing is touching the frame of the vehicle or the, uh, or the uh, body up into there. So you may have to put a wedge or a wrench or something while you're tightening everything together just to make sure that nothing is going to rattle or, you know, touch the uh, cross members here or anything like that. Not that big a deal. And uh, you'll start tightening after you get everything assembled. Uh, make sure you put your little clamps on while you're assembling. Also, don't forget those clamps right there because there's four of those to put on. And, uh, and then hang everything, you know, all the way back first before you start tightening everything down. Mock everything up while it's fitted on the vehicle. And then start snugging everything down. 
from front to back. And it's not that bad, but removal was not the simplest thing in the world. And it comes with all those brackets right there, so make sure you tighten it from the front of the vehicle and work your way back, and then tighten them pretty strong. It says, you know, a good 50 foot-pounds or so to snug her down. And, um, you know, then double check everything, make sure everything is good and snug and no rattles. You know, you, you maybe bump on it. Make sure you don't hear anything rattling anywhere or touching anything. And then fire that sucker up and see how she sounds. And then it, it advises you to recheck all the clamps and everything after you've driven it, you know, for a good 50 miles or something like that. So, um, the main thing is have a good electric cut saw. Most everything was about a 15 millimeter socket, um, but I had to replace the flange bolts, you know, up on the front there. So you can use probably a, a half inch diameter was a good size for that. A good brute, you know, make sure you get like a, a grade eight half inch bolt. It only needs to be about an inch and a half long because I got some that are too long. So an inch and a half works fine for that. And um, that's that, man. Uh, it was more difficult than I thought because I thought it was going to come out easier and these bolts were just not cooperating. So whatever. Live and learn. And here's the old one here. It is heavy, it is huge, you know, so make sure that you are careful when you're removing all this stuff because it could fall right out of there after you cut it out or take it off the hanger. You know, if you don't have a helper, make sure you have some sort of protection because it'll flat fall out and clonk you in the head. Almost happened to me. And make sure you wear gloves, you know, like some rubbery, rubber gloves like this. Make sure you wear eye protection because there'll be debris and stuff falling off while you're cutting. And I think that's about it, man. Looks like a disaster, but turned out fine. Anywho, that's it. I'll do a video comparing the two, uh, you know, stock exhaust and this one. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And uh, I'm gonna reset my computer also Anytime you do an exhaust change or intake change or a tune up or anything major, you know, relating to the tuning of the vehicle, I like to reset the computer of it and then let it relearn the, you know, the throttle and uh, the fuel and intake and everything. So that's just what I do. Anytime, any vehicle, when I do a major uh, project, relating to exhaust or intake or tune-up related, I always try to reset the computer.